it's just family oriented, um, being from from Kinston, you know, and that's kind of how, like, I love this organization. Like, we're family oriented. Everything that we do, we we love each other. All fifteen players care about each other, and everything that we do. So, with that being said, welcome to a new episode, an impromptu episode of In Space. I'm your host, Chris Conner, my dog, Lito, who is inside of the Pelicans practice, practice facility right now. It is 544. There's still lights in there. I'm assuming my brother is putting up jumpers. What's we gotta, good, dog? We got to work, man. The work got to get done, man. I, I, I'm not going to let Fred down. I'm not going to be the only person that Fred can't make a better shooter. <laughs> hey, man. So, look, man, I, I got to give you your flowers for this, man. I mean, this episode, everyone is... You can see the title alone. It, it talks about we're going to dive a little bit into um, Coach Spoon, Teresa Weatherspoon, Hall of Famer, Teresa Weatherspoon, and Zion Williamson's relationship. And that takes, you know, that that conversation can go in a bunch of different pockets. But it's based off of, for those who don't know, as we get right into it, uh, Howard Beck from Sports Illustrated. Zion was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as well, but there's... Um, there was an article released today. It's it's, it's in that magazine, uh, basically talking about the return of Zion and how much different he is, the uh, maturation of him of sorts. How, you know, I mean, he's better physically, athletically, and mentally than he was pre-injury in a lot of different ways. And shout out to Lee. I, I got to give him his flowers for really pointing. Or grabbing on to the excerpts in the article um, talking about how important Coach Spoon was in this process. And that opens that that opens the door to um, a wider conversation. Monday just so happened to be um, World Mental Health Day. And I find that interesting. I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but I find that interesting that if you read that article and you see a lot of things that people, I'd say a you know, majority of people, fans mainly, maybe only heard a little bit of, didn't have in detail or didn't hear from him. It just always gives us the reminder that you really don't know what someone's going through um, until you know what they're going through. First thing, Lito, you had a chance to read the article? Yeah, I definitely had a chance to read it. And uh, I read it when it first came out. Um, I, you know, before we get started, you know, I, I'd just like to just give a shout out to Zion for being brave enough to open up about his mental health. Um, a lot of the things in the article I didn't know about. And as a fan of the team, um, you know, I comment on the team, but, I, you know, I shouldn't be privy to. I shouldn't be privy to Zion's mental health. Like that, that is not something that he owes us as a, as a, as a, you know, as a, as a, as a human, like fuck the basketball. Like he doesn't owe us that as a human. So I want to just give a shout out to him for, you know, pulling us behind the curtain. Cause you know, Zion, Zion is, as we know, he's been a really private guy and uh, you know, just to, for him to show us the vulnerable sides, I think that is uh, I mean, you know, like that, that's, that's maturation in, in, in itself. So this, this conversation is, you know, I, I find it very interesting from my perspective because, you know, there, there was a time where and he gets into it really in the article about his. Um, people perceiving his actions and what was going on. Um, differently than his reality. And we talked about a lot of spaces last year, especially before the team really got rolling before the CJ McCollum trade. His motives were questioned. His passion was questioned. His commitment to New Orleans, to the Pelicans organization was questioned. I'd be a liar if I sat up here and act like I didn't have my questions. I didn't have my doubts. You know, but one of the things that this article kind of put in perspective for me, Lito, was that, you know, you all you got to remind yourself sometimes, man, that <laughs> and, you know, Antonio Daniels talked about it a lot in some of those spaces that we have sing, focusing on Zion and his return, especially after the setback. You know, 
these guys are young and they're humans, man. And even if they, even if some of these things Zion could have handled, or from my perspective, from our perspective, and we were giving advice, we might have said, nah, you probably shouldn't do that. Or nah, you probably shouldn't go that route. Or nah, you should try this. He was in a completely different world and mental space at that time. Before we dive deeper into, into the article and focus more on Teaspoon and Zion's yeah. relationship, did anything in this article, Lito, like, is there anything that you feel different about today than you say, if I talked to you a year ago, you would be on the complete side of the, the other side of the fence about? Yeah, man, uh, definitely. You know, like you said, last year was um, – last year, so the injury – it seemed to catch everybody off guard. And, you know, we, we were just expecting Zion to play uh, and to find out about it at training camp. It was, it was a, it was a tough, uh, you know, it was a, it was rough hearing the news um, of him and him. Like there was n no real timeline. It was indefinite. Um, so, you know, as a fan, you automatically are like, Ugh. You know, what I'm saying? here we go again. Here, here we here we go. And 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 I want to say this like it's you know AD AD did speak about this part in spaces. It wasn't so much that we were down on Zion. We were just down on like New Orleans injury history. I think it was like we've been snake bit before, um, and it just kind of manifested through like that. But. To answer your question, sure. If I if I if I'm going through the article and a lot of times like in life you don't get a chance or you don't put yourself in the other person's shoes when you're cheering or jeering or saying, you know, negative things about them. And I mean, of course, I think I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I didn't question his passion and I ain't question if he was really bought in to the the not only New Orleans, but like the Pelicans organization. But I couldn't really fault him because a lot of the shit that had happened kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like if he wasn't bought in, like you had three head coaches, you, you, you know, the organization wasn't exact. The, the vision wasn't exactly as clear as it is now. But after reading the article, like, yeah, man, you feel you feel terrible about like the things that he was going through mentally. And I think the thing that me as a fan, everybody as a fan has to kind of like remember is that it's just basketball like this is a human being's life like when you when you you got Mardi Gras floats calling you you know whatever you got uh the, the national media saying you know nasty remarks about your weight like I think you gotta realize somebody mama reading that yeah and, and you know and look man I, I what I be trying to remember sometimes man especially as I get older like when we talking about we critiquing or analyzing tw year, you know, 21, 20, 22 year old growing adults that live lives or that, that live upbringings that I couldn't imagine, especially for someone like Zion, who's been the face of, um, I, I can't say the face of basketball, but he's, he's been a, you know, a celebrity, a superstar damn near since he was 14 years old. And to live up to those, ex to have those expectations and not work your way and make decisions that maybe you come back today and be like, ah, but at 22 and 21, I made a lot of decisions that I wouldn't have been like. But this article goes into a lot of different, a lot of those things. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, it just shows that. Like, dog, I've been I've been. I'm currently maybe about a half a year apart from my therapy sessions. I'm currently trying to get back with my old therapist. She just doesn't have the time, but it's very, it, it shows that even like behind the scenes, it's important to have that one person, even if it's just one individual, it's important to have that one person that you could relate to. You could talk to, you could, you can feel as if you can trust. Cause AD would talk about it. In the spaces, he would say, <laughs> he would say things like, it, "It was a weird situation for him because on one end he has he has information that he can't really feed, but
but it's a yeah. bunch of angry people with upset and confused people that want stuff. So he's trying to be real, but he can't. Yeah, he can't. Right. On one end, you know, he's saying, "Yo, it's a lot of things that I just I can't tell y'all, but I'm telling you, that brother's going through something. He's gonna be okay." Yeah. Listen to the listen to the um you know the interview he did with Joel and I to begin the year or through media day. Like what you're hearing right now is tough, but it's a lot of things that he's going through that I can't really get into right now. Sure. It looks like Zion may have went into a lot of those things himself. So um Teresa Weatherspoon. Yeah. Outside of being a Hall of Famer. Outside of being the person that growing like for me growing up, like when I think of women's basketball, when I think of the WNBA, which was my like real first introduction to 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 women's basketball as a as a shorty, she's one of the people that I think of along of along with uh, Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops, um, and there's a few other, but that that's just that that face I remember I remember the I remember the cornrows I remember the braids. I remember seeing her like, oh man, she liked the Alan Ives of the WNBA. She was in Joanna Man. I remember her playing with the with the with the New York Liberty. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's right. just I remember these things. So, and I remember the yeah. passion that was in her then. So then watching, seeing her her growth as a coach and having opportunities, whether it be college or WNBA or working her way her, her way up, being considered for for um for head coach positions to now with to everything you know about Coach Spoon, Lito, what's your impression on her? Um, man, I would say my overall impression of her is she feels like a blessing. She feels, she feels good. I don't know if you can say that about a lot of people, but like she feels like all the all the good things. Uh, Pac had this quote where he said that you know people don't people they may not remember what you did for them or what you said to them but they will remember how you made them feel all throughout this article zion makes it abundantly clear that teaspoon is not like just about basketball she's about the human side and the thing that brandon said in the clip that you uh started the pie with is that you know he loves this organization because of you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Teaspoon is definitely one of those et cetera. Um, like you just get, she feels joy. She feels like joy. I've never met Teaspoon. I've never been around Teaspoon. I can feel her. I can feel her spirit though throughout whatever she does. Like I, you know what I'm saying? Like being at the games, like just her talking to players, like how she interacts with them. I feel I feel like you know when you when you build a house you you build it brick by brick uh teaspoon is a part of the New Orleans Pelicans foundation it's it's the fabric that makes it go you know what's what's funny man is that we when David Griffin first got hired he talked a lot about family he said family over and over and over it became a meme Amongst Pell's Twitter, right? It people would roll their eyes at it because it looked like a like I mean, all families are dysfunctional, but this looked over like this looked beyond dysfunctional in the in the early years. Today, you, you kind of you're seeing his vision because now the players are telling you they have a they have a therapist inside of the facility in which. I'm I'm sure that there's no way that they're the only team that has a therapist inside of their organization that you can go to inside one of the facilities. But yeah. the Brandon Ingram makes time in his interview with CJ McCullum to talk about it and his and how he deals with his own mental health. That video, him talking about family. A lot of the players talk about family. Zion's talked about family. And the people that they're bringing into this organization, from Willie Green uh, to even, you know, Griff saying um, Willie Hernan Gomez is, is untradeable. The actions and the things that you're seeing happen or organically kind of match those things. And Teaspoon's a part of that. So yeah. backing off what you said, let's get into it. So 
and I'm going to get a full screen, well, full screen here. So here's one of the things that Zion is quoted for saying about, um, or Weatherspoon is saying about Zion in a moment where he's walking off the floor or he's leaving the Smoothie King arena, can barely walk, reaggravated his foot, doesn't know what it means. She says, at that most vulnerable, vulnerable moment, it was important for me to let him know that he's a great young man. And he's worthy of those things that you work for. I could see a young man fighting to find his way, had lost all sense of direction. And I just wanted to reach out at that moment to let him know I didn't care about basketball. I cared about what he was feeling, what he was thinking, how difficult things were for him at that moment. She added, I didn't want him to feel alone. And when I tell you there was some dark days for that young man, there was some dark days. It was much bigger than basketball at that point. You didn't want to lose a young man. You didn't want to lose a young man. As I try to get this off the screen and it will come off. <laughs> Dog. Yeah. This is why I wanted this show. Yeah. Because that is deeper than basketball. She yeah. said it, but it's way deeper than basketball. And more than any fan, more than any of us that have sources inside the organization, more than any journal, journalistic member, uh, more than anybody that's um that follows every single detail that they see leaked, talked about, spoken, every press conference, you can't make up for that. That tells you a lot. That's saying a lot. I mean. You know, I don't even know that the, the 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 that's genuine goodness. That's genuine that that the the goal the goal in life, you know, is is to be a good human. It is to help people in their time of need. Because the thing is, like, yo, everybody's gonna have a time of need. There is nobody, there is nobody walking this earth who is just gonna be continually strong 24-7, 365 for their entire existence. Everybody at some point needs a shoulder to lean on. What, what, no matter what happens throughout Zion's, like, not career, but Zion's life, he's going to remember that. He's going to remember those moments where c Smooth was there for him. I feel like, we got, again, we got to keep it, keep this in perspective that basketball is, is just basketball. Basketball is not just life. If you miss a shot, nobody's going to die. You know what I'm saying? If you miss a if you miss a game, like the the, the thing in, in in Zion's case is that you know he he's I'm sure been on top of the world his entire life. He's never really been injured like that, right? So if, if you have these injuries and, and it feels like the world is pounding, you know, climbing on top of you and 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 they trying to bury you, they they put you in the dirt every day. Somebody has, you know, that your your name, you know, smearing it. You you like how many how many times can I read that? Like. How many how many jokes can I can I take, uh, you know? And, and I and I I feel like again, peace to that brother for just coming forward and speaking his truths and and, and letting us behind the curtain, bro. Like mental health, shout out to you know world mental health. Day. Mental health is a thing like that none of us can escape. Like we cannot. No, if you look at Zion, you look at you know Bron, Kobe, whoever. Yo, even the greatest of the greats have have doubts. Everybody doubts themselves. That you, you're as a human being, your subconscious is the only thing that won't stop talking to you. It will not shut up. You can't just turn it off. You gotta be able to understand. You know what I'm saying? Like in that case where you know Teaspoon was just saying, you deserve these things. You know, this is for everybody out there. There's a book out there called The Four Agreements. And uh, it, it definitely helped me get through times. I mean, uh, I advocate for mental health and, and and therapy all the time. Shit, like I love my therapist. Shout out to her. That's my dog. Because like, yo, like sometimes you just gotta reset yourself. Sometimes you forget who you are. You you, you, you you need that. Like life again. Life will just pile on your shoulders to the point where even they call this guy Xanos, right? And all he wanted was a hug from Teaspoon. Because look, here's something else in the article. Zion said, I felt helpless. I couldn't do anything about it. He's talking about, he's talking about his injury. 
And this is mainly shooting towards what he re where he thinks he's on his way back in a couple weeks. And then he has a setback. Yeah. So while pundits are telling me I don't care about my teammates or I'm a bad teammate or I don't want to be somewhere, the whole time I'm just worried about my foot. I'm worried about, man, I hope my foot heals right. Because if it doesn't, who knows, I may not get to play basketball again. Like, dog, I, I can't, sure. I think about it all the time, you know, like, there are some people, whether they're right or wrong, they believe, yo, man, this is what you signed up for. You're making millions of dollars. Right. You know, um, you're treated as if you're the you're the world's treasure. You're a superstar talent. A team is built around you. This is unfortunately what comes with it. And I'll let you can decide as a viewer if that's right or, or if that's wrong to some degree. But I will say this, man, no matter what you have in life, and Lito, Lito says it said it already in regards to you know, the greatest. Worry about if they're enough. The greatest worry about. You know, they at some point you go through some type of some type of hurdle or battle. Who do you go to? Mm -hmm. I see I see millionaires all the time, especially in the entertainment, fall, go from up here to fall all the way down. Just based off not knowing who they could go to when they feel in a certain type of way, not having a not having an outlet that isn't, I guess, damaging to them. Him having one with Coach Spoon to where she she sees him and says, hey, are you OK? And he says, no, I'm not. And then they cry like that's that's man. Everybody at some point in life, everybody needs that kind of individual, because most of us, man, let's you know, let's call it what it is. Lito, we suffer in silence all the time, all the Absolutely. time. We suffer in silence. It could be and it don't always have to be big, big troubles. It could be the smallest things. We say, nah, I'll be all right. No, nah, I got it. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. no, nah, I'm a man. No, nah, I'm an adult. I'm good. Yeah. I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the reality. That's so crazy. That's crazy because like being a man has nothing to do with you having mental anguish. Like that, at all. That, you know what I'm saying? Like just because of your your sex, that doesn't mean you can't go through. Like I, I'm I'm strong. I I go to the gym. I lift weights. Yo, bro, you can hurt. It's okay. Like and I'm gonna tell you this. You you just said it, but I'm gonna double back to it. The most gangster thing to me in this whole article that Zion said when Teaspoon asked. If he's okay, and he said, no, I'm not, that's gangster. Because at that point, he realized he was not okay. And who – yo, listen, Pete, if he – let's just let's just say he said, I am okay, right? Who knows how he could have spiraled? Well, who knows where this could have went? 100. Now, um, this is a serious topic, so uh, I'm not going to bring in the segue that I was about to, but I got to give us a message from our sponsor here. A DraftKings Sportsbook. Guys, NBA fans, the wait is over. Basketball is back, so tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA money line bet, hopefully on the Pelicans, and $200. Damn, I read that right? Nope. They get $200 in free bets if your team wins. So you bet on the Pelicans and they win, you get $200 in free bets. Hopefully, you keep winning and you keep betting on the Pelicans. Just make sure it's the right night. Check this out, though. In addition to the usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt-in, place a stepped-up same-game parlay today. With payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BOOT. It was up here, but it's not anymore. I don't know where it went. But B O B O T is there. Make any $5 bet this week and get a $200 free bet if your team wins. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code BOOT, which is now back at the bottom now under my name. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, 
Crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed anytime by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537. All right. So, yeah, man. Um, and look, their relationship goes, we've, we've heard how important that relationship is for a while now, right? And that's why it was very important to have this, to have this conversation outside of talking about, you know, diving into the mental health aspect of it, how important that is you know, for all of us, especially as black, as black men, right. And having, and, and, and listen, Lito, talk about that. You have so often, bro, we are in circles. We are in spirits or, or, or in places where we go through things and we may not have nobody that we feel like we can relate to. We feel like somebody wants something from us. We feel like somebody ain't really, go, ain't really being able to relate to what we going through. Don't understand it or ain't been able or ain't been in opposition so we ain't trying to hear it or their approach is off. Yeah. You got a woman, you got a black woman in that place. That's right there for you. And she's going to call it square. Cause one of the, another thing, they, another thing they talked about in the article was that when she gave him advice, it wasn't all, it wasn't all rosy. It was some tough love mixed in there too. That's, that's, that's the thing. Yo, there, there, advice First of all, yes, a, a, a black woman, I mean, she had a hand in not only helping this man revive his basketball career, but she had a hand in helping him revive his mental health. Like she she make him made him take a step forward in the right direction. The thing about the thing about a good person in your corner is, yo, that advice is not gonna be what you think it is. It's not gonna be what you want to hear. Like that shit is gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? You you're gonna have to literally look your look at yourself in the mirror, and you gotta decide like what you gonna do. Like Zion could have easily just been like, man, you know, I'm gonna keep keep doing what I'm doing. I put up 27 points a game last like last time I played. Like I don't have to really, I don't really don't have to change nothing if I don't want to. Like nobody, like you know, what are you gonna tell me? But you know, you gotta really look at the man in the mirror, man. You gotta be willing to accept that advice. Um, a lot of people got yes men around them, and 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 you get you get a certain type of advice, and and it's not necessarily for the betterment of you; it's to keep you right where you at. So, <clears throat> Zion's open, um, I guess, support and um, love, flowers given towards Teresa Weatherspoon, they go way deeper than just today. I've heard you, you've heard him. Early on, when he when he got drafted, uh, when not when he got drafted, but I think uh, like I think it was into year two where he really opened up to how she helped him in a lot of different ways. Whether it was just simply through 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 her words, whether it would be through text messages or in person, how they worked together on things on the basketball floor. But here's something here from this was during that year the last time he was on the floor for for a season where he puts up 27 points a game he had a game against the timberwolves where he went nuts he's asked about his confidence how he got his groove going here's what he says i would definitely say my confidence in going deeper into my arsenal was important that's really a shout out to two people my stepfather and coach Teresa Willispoon. <laughs> My dog is talking about confidence and going deeper into his bag. He says his stepfather, and we know how important that man is for him. We, Leo, look at me. We know how important right. that, 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 you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's shout, out to the OG. Spoon. shout out, shout out to the OG, man. Come on, he, man. He definitely, he definitely a, a cornerstone. It says, yeah. hold on, I, I got you, hold on. It says, it's just the small things. And she's like, Z, do this. Take your time and be you. It's those small things that give me all the confidence I need to go out there and be me. That's in 2021. <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm, I mean, look, listen, man. Listen, T Teaspoon is a. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a if there's a if there's an adjective, there's a word where I could I could properly describe her i you know I don't, I don't really think i don't really think we're doing her justice like honestly uh you 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 she she can move mountains our my first my first memory at teaspoon is that half court shot uh when she was with the liberty 
And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just remember that. Like, I remember she played with this power, this style, this grace. And, you know, now she's coaching with this power, this style, this grace. And more importantly, it seems like she's living, you know what I'm saying, with, with these same things. Like, the, 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 this is not like she's not giving you a, a facade. She is the person that she is. And I feel like when, when people come to you as a whole person and, and you're trying to, like, as, as a 21-year-old, uh, Zion – like is not <laughs> he's not gonna be who he is. You know what I'm saying? He he's still you know trying to find out who he is and, and and you know what about him he may like or he may not like. So when you got somebody who's that self-assured, that sure of themselves as a as a person, as a coach, and he calls her a big sister, like that 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 that, that that's an ally, man. Like that's a that's a natural, that's a real ally. And, you know, look, man, I, you know, I know people, people are going to listen to this episode and, you know, I mean, this isn't like, you know, we're not living at a, in a spot to where we still can't be critical of moves that were decisions that were made. Some of the things that we read, that we heard, some that we are sure were facts and maybe some that uh, can be disputed. All in all, man, I think the the beauty in this is that it's sometimes cool, even if it's a year later, if it's years later to really hear from the person that was going through it, what happened and let it go from there. And through that, you get even a deeper dive into a special relationship. Like, look, man. And that's, you know, that that's why it's you, you can really tell through a lot of the things that Zion talked about with teaspoon why Willie Green was such a good fit for this team and for this coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, uh, for this organization. Because they fit well as leaders, as motivators, as people that um, empower others, people that will give it to you straight one way or another, that have the experience from playing the game at a professional level and pretty much doing it for – um multiple decades but it's just it's awesome that you know you hear like you know Ron Artest got on a NBA finals podium and thanked his therapist if Zion Williamson wins a championship it is clear that after he thanks God and after he thanks his teammates and after he thanks his stepdad or his little brother Noah or his mom Teresa Weatherspoon is going to be one of those people. Find you a person. If you can't find a message from any of it, from, from nothing else that we said on this show, find you a person you can find in that you, that you trust because you are going to go through things in life. Find you a person that genuinely cares about you and find you somebody that just ain't in your life to tell you something that you want to hear, but tell you what you need to hear. I got nothing <laughs> like that was <laughs> that, no nah, that was that was like well that was very well said and and well I do have something yo like it, it's it's okay to not be okay like it's okay to talk about it like it's okay to feel it's okay to it's okay to be a be a human like you don't gotta put on this persona you don't gotta be it's okay to be yourself just be yourself like that'll that'll get you in any room that'll get you in any door like and if people don't mess with you because of like who you are then it's just not your people. And that's cool. 100, man. So, yo, I appreciate y'all being on this return episode of In Space. Um, We're going to do more uh, throughout the throughout the season. Lito kind of bullied me to come back to to doing this versus waiting until another preseason game. I got I to gotta keep it 100 with y'all. So I'm going to let Lito get out of here and get back to putting up some jumpers so, you know, <laughs> Coach, Coach Vincent don't kick him off the team, kick him off the practice squad. You know, but um, shout out to everybody that's been supporting everything that we doing and um yeah man until next time i see y'all in the spaces i see y'all in on twitter and wherever else we find each other at you in space now we out Ooh.